Okay, hello and welcome to part number three of a coffee quarter. Now that I have my coffee, we can get straight into it. I am still in the same folder that I was before. So let's just open the index file where I have written down some stuff that I want to show you today. Um, the first thing is spell check. Um, but in order to spell check, we need some uh, text to actually spell check. So uh, let's insert this test paragraph by the completion engine, which is um, Latin and nonsensical Latin at that, I think. Um, so the spell checker should complain a bunch because it is configured to be English. So let's enable spell check by pressing leader, so spacebar, space S for spell, and then we enable it by pressing the slash key where your question mark is. And well, it seems to know lorem, doesn't know ipsum of course and a bunch of other words and the reason it knows lorem and dolor it might be because i have already added these to the spell checklist because if we have a word which we think should be correct but it's marked as incorrect we can add it using space s and then uh, we can say good meaning this is a good word um, the same would be r for right if we if something is labeled as correct but we think it is incorrect we can say leader s and then b for bad or w for wrong um, if we want to spell suggestions we just press leader s s and then we get suggestions for what it could be and we can start typing here maybe we meant possum indeed um, and now we replace this with possum and there's fuzzy finding in there as well so you don't need to type the exact word it will narrow the search down is quite quite handy the spell checking keys are normally on the z key in normal mode because but there's so many keys on that and combinations that i keep forgetting them so this is why i put the specifically spell checking things on leader s um, but the uh, the that key still works so you can still say uh, z and then i think it's g for good let me just check that G, yeah, that works. Um, uh, if you want to jump to the next wrong word, we can use this key, so the angled bracket in this direction or in the other direction. And uh, you will press angled br bracket. This is normally like for movement stuff, so angled bracket jump to next and then S for spell. So angled bracket and S goes to the next or previous wrongly spelled words, so we can go through our text, angled bracket s, leader s s, get the suggestion we want here, control j and d, uh, control j and k, move up and, up and down here, or we just start typing, and uh, to accept. Let's delete this paragraph again, uh, leader d i p, or delete in paragraph, uh, no, no leader, just d i p, just an old wooden, wooden thing. Um, and let's disable spell checking again because while it is enabled you also get uh, completion while you're spelling and i don't actually like this i you can disable it in the configuration as well so let's disable it for now we also get auto completion for emojis which is very important um we can talk about otters we can talk about penguins we can talk about pandas very handy and now what i want to show is using other programming languages than r or or python that i showed you in the previous videos and let's use one for example lua um, right now we don't get anything in here so let's enable quarto for lua as well or like code completion for lua so let's quit here Open Vim as settings, leader ff to find a file, and we want to find the Quarto Lua file. Go right before behind Julia. To the end of the word and insert Lua as well. And while you add it, you can add more languages as well. All right, let's quit this. Open the index file again. And because we already have Lua in here, it should have already activated 
by quarter follower. Maybe we save once, yes. So we get completion here. Do a hazard print function, that's nice. Now, if I render this, um, Quarto doesn't actually know what to do with Lua, so we just get our code, we don't get any output, this is intended. Um, but we can still get our nice code completions features in, uh, in NeoVim. But it's nice if you are writing a blog post about some other programming language, maybe where you don't necessarily need to show the output. Um, but I will show you some more cool things regarding that as well. So um, what if we want to execute a Lua code right from our Markdown document? Well, Lua is one of those languages which also has a REPL, so read, evaluate, print loop, just like R or Python. So let's open one using uh, leader C for code. And we want just a, a no normal terminal, N for new, which opens our bash terminal. We're in this folder here. Uh, we can start the Lua uh, REPL here and use it in here. This is nice. Um, and I would like to actually close this here, close our preview. I would like to move this terminal to the right side. So I'm in normal mode in here and not in insert mode. I press Control W for the window controls and then capital L to move it to the right side, like the Vim direction key. So this is quite nice. And now we can send stuff here. We press Control Enter or Leader Enter. Uh, control enter if you have configured it correctly using uh, a terminal that supports this um, and uh, it shows us that it wants to send something to job id 15 which is just the last terminal we created this is good if you have created other terminals in the meantime you can go here press leader cs for show i guess and it shows you which channel id this has so if you have multiple terminals you can switch between those using leader cc for code configure, I guess. Um, this, this is how I made this binding up. Um, and then you can switch between why you want to send stuff. Um, now let's write some Lua code. Let's write a function. Hello is a function. Um, and it just prints out there. It says global value lowercase, it means local. I mean, yes, uh, I guess it is a local value variable or local function, and it's not used. So let's make another Lua chunk here and use this function. Save twice just to get rid of the warnings. And now we can use our normal language features, like GD for go to definition. In this case, um, Lua has this weird quirk the language server where if you define things in this order, it is comes up twice. In the, so we have to choose one of these because one is at the start of where the function keyword is and the other at the start of the name. I think this doesn't happen if I do it like this. Yeah, then we only get one completion or one jumping to option. Now, uh, in this, in the case of the Lua REPL, I don't think this works like this because the local keyword will be just in the context of this one, like these couple of lines in the REPL. So it won't find the header function unless we send everything all at once. Mm, no, this doesn't have to work. So the Lua REPL doesn't like local stuff in here. So let's put it here. And let's say we have written our blog post about the cool stuff you can do with the Lua. And we want to, well, first publish this blog post with Quarto, of course. But we also want to actually export our code and run it. So how do we run this? Um, how do we get the code out? Well, we already have a file, right? Uh, leader ls to list our buffers and also include the hidden ones. Um, well, this keyword shortcut only works in the configuration I made. Um, and we see our third buffer, buffer number three, is actually our hidden otter buffer to provide code completion. So B3, we go here. This is our Lua buffer. So we could just use this, but it's not being saved normally. 
which is good. Um, sometimes it's being saved by accident, I'm still working on this. Um, so what if you want to export, uh, export this? We press leader Q and then E for export. And we want to give it a name now, index.lua, seems fine. And it's now being exported, let's edit it. And we also notice that this is now already formatted and it's using whatever um, formatting is provided by the language server. So if, if you have a language where the language server provides some formatting or you have your NeoVim configured in some way that you get formatting from some kind of language server, um, this will be called. Um, I can show you that how, if I add some empty lines, I press leader L F and it formats it. And this is the same that's being called if we export it. Now that we are in this sort of layout, what if we want to build a small little IDE? And for this, I am using R because this is what I like the most for interactive data analysis. So we need to activate again because we changed the language now. And yeah, it's actually switching now. This is nice. So let's load the tidyverse. Let's also load the Palmer penguins package. And now this here, we need to quit Lua and open an R console. Perfect. Now we can send stuff here. We didn't even need to create a different console. Same one. Um, and let's take the penguins and create a little visualization from it using the ggplot package. So we want to take the fill lengths and millimeters and the fill depth in millimeters at some points. And now we're good to go. Um, you might have seen in the change of brightness in my face that this now opened up on my secondary monitor as a plot. If I pull this over here, you notice it looks a bit different than it might look on your screen because I'm using um, a Pop OS, a Linux distribution, which already includes a tiling feature. So my windows are automatically aligned here. Let's disable this using Super G for this window and rescale it a bit. Now, what if we want to have this a bit like our studio? Let's say we ha only have one monitor, we want everything nice and compact. We don't want to put this over our um, <laughs> console, of course, because then we wouldn't be able to see our code. Um, but likewise, if I now switch to this window um, over the other one, so we can't see it. So let's go here, space, uh, alt spacebar, and choose always on top. Now, if I select the other window, it stays on here. That's nice. And we need to make some room for this here. So just uh, let's just create a new empty buffer using colon new and we can resize this put it here now we have a, ourselves a little ide we can keep coding here let's color it by species and we have our little plot window just like in our studio which i kind of like actually in the layout so um, this is a nice one monitor setup for interactive data science um, and before I jump to the Tmux integration, which is, allows us to do something similar, but with a bit more flexibility, specifically on Linux, um, because this won't be interesting for the Windows users, I want to talk about part four first, um, because when I, um, because then the Windows users can decide if they want to stick around for the Tmux part. Um, I didn't plan how many videos I wanted to make when I made video one. So I just put part one on it because I thought, well, I might do some more. Um, but it seems that people like it. So um, if you have more ideas, what you would like to see in Quarto and NeoVim, uh, put it down in the comments below. And I never thought I would say this, but you may also su subscribe to get notified of new videos. Um, all right. Um, so if you're a Linux user or just queue as a Linux user and sticking around, uh, let's look into Tmux. I have made a similar Kickstarter configuration for Tmux. Uh, link is also on the um, Quarto Envim Kickstarter um, GitHub repo. And I'll put a link down below in the description. And if you have enabled this, uh, you get a nice 
schema. So and the install installation instructions are also on the readme there. So let's close this and let's start tmux. And this now gives us a bit more flexibility. I can open our index file in here. Oh, and before that, we want to open Vim and go to settings, go to Quarto, uh, the settings for this plugin, Vim Slime, which sends our code to different um, locations, the terminal. This is in the global configuration. I should probably move this to a exactly next to it. But I have commented out some lines which we can enable so we can switch between sending something to Tmux or sending something to the integrated NeoVim terminal. So now we have switched it to Tmux. And now we open the index file again. And we also open another Tmux split using the prefix key, which in our configuration is control spacebar. So control spacebar. And then uh, in this, this symbol, the pipe symbol, to open a split on the right. And in here we can open whatever console we want, like an R console. And we can switch between windows using alt and vim direction keys. And if I now have some code in here, I can send it using normal keys and it asked me do you want to send to the default tmux second yes and the second panel is correct and if i have multiple consoles using prefix and then uh, minus to open one down here i can switch between these with all direction keys say i have an ipython console down here um, and i want to send my Python code here, um, leader CC to configure. And I now switch this from pane number two to pane number three. And now we can send something to pane number three. I haven't mm, figured out how to like configure this automatically to switch between sending to different places. But this is a quite a niche use case. Um, but it's very handy if you're doing system and stuff, if you have like lots of lots and lots of consoles and you're sending code to different places. All right, um, that being said, um, this is all from me today and I'll see you in the next one.